Hello everyone. Welcome to today's short lecture. My name is Katrina Davis Kendrick. I'm faculty librarian at the University of South Carolina Lancaster. Today I'm going to share with you how I created a modified folksonomy for a research group. This presentation will review the characteristics of a folksonomy and give you insight into the challenges and opportunities I encountered during my project. Let's get started with the fundamentals, namely, what defines folksonomies? Well, they have certain characteristics. A review of literature generally supports that folksonomies are created by users. The language or tags, also known as metadata, are generated from the user's or consumer's own experiences with the material, interface, or resource. Folksonomies are also collaborative. Consumers of a tool can create knowledge that benefits the community of users and improve how the resource is utilized. Folksonomies also categorize content. They are a sort of cl classification system that links ideas or concepts, but there are no hierarchies between the concepts or ideas. The metadata may be simultaneously classified by a number of tags, and those tags may not be permanent or related. Sometimes, relationships between tags may not be immediately understood. Folksonomies are also accessible. The metadata is generated to enhance the function of the resource and to help aid in information discovery. In short, the tags help users find out what else is housed within the resource interface or tool. You probably interact with folksonomy communities online. Have you ever heard of or used any of these resources or tools? You may not think of Wikipedia as a folksonomy, but it is. Consider that it is user-driven. Think about how Wikipedia uses tags that lead you to more information about a subject. Have you ever noticed that a tag for, say, boy group leads you to a boy band entry? What are the implications for such a redirect? Facebook is interesting because the folksonomy is directly derived from the status updates, photo tags, and activity announcements of individual users. Flickr allows users to tag photos and can be used to locate personal, archival, and corporate images. Twitter is perhaps the best known tool in terms of the use of tags, which help users find popular discussions. Evernote is a tool that helps its users remember everything. It organizes input, called notes, by tags that are created by the user for easy access later. Users can only access the information in their own account. Evernote is the tool I use for my folksonomy project. You'll notice in this chain that while all of these resources are linked, Wikipedia is on its own a little bit. It doesn't necessarily work with uh, these other platforms. For instance, Facebook and Flickr work well. I can be in Flickr and if I choose to share a photo with a friend in Facebook, I don't have to log into Facebook separately to do that. I can share that photo from Flickr onto my Facebook account. Facebook and Twitter also work well together. I can tweet in Twitter and that can be shared up in my Facebook account. Also, Evernote works well with Twitter and Facebook. So these folksonomies work together. They work across multiple platforms. And even though Wikipedia is a folksonomy, it doesn't necessarily work across platforms, but others do. What other sites do you visit that may use folksonomies? Can you identify the folksonomy in use? Let me tell you about my real world project. First, a bit of background. In addition to my job at USC Lancaster, I'm also a senior research associate with the collaborative digital cultural studies research team called the K-Pop Collective. This project focuses on the domestic and international development of Korean popular culture, and as part of its knowledge gathering initiative, we've developed an information archive, which is compiled and organized in Evernote. Used in conjunction with a browser extension called a Web Clipper, the information archive houses websites and articles pertaining to our areas of focus. K-pop collective research team members clip articles and tag them using the approved taxonomy or folksonomy so the items can be found later. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the challenges and what I like to call wins in terms of deciding to use Evernote for this project. First I talk about the challenges. 
Uh, when I first started working with this project, the director had already input information into the archive and tagged that information. So my direct and first order of business was to work with redundant tags and make sure we rename things to be more fluid. So one of the things, for instance, everything was being called Korea this or Korea that. Well, we work with Korean popular culture. That's our main area of focus. So the word Korea didn't have to show up over and over again. We need to find out another way to tag the items that were in there and start working with a, a new conceptual framework. Because Evernote is a, a folksonomy sort of tool, it doesn't recognize hierarchy. So we wanted to create a subframe of tags and then subtags, even though it didn't recognize this hierarchy, just to help the users who would be clipping these items have a framework to work with so they could organize their thoughts when they were working and evaluating information. Evernote also has a lag time when it's being opened, so the more information you put into Evernote, the longer it takes to boot up, um, for lack of a better way to say it. It takes a long time for the those notes to load and the more you put in the longer it takes so it's, it can be difficult when you want to work quickly. We have multiple clippers we have about five people putting information into the archive so that was another reason why we decided to create a modified folksonomy so we could be using the same language as closely as possible. That being said a challenge in itself was creating this formalized folksonomy and determining what were the major areas of focus that we wanted to be thinking about when we were clipping items so we could then create the common language for everyone to use. Another challenge in Evernote is that it does not have a tag visualization, visualization cloud tool. So if I want to see what the most popular tags in my information archive are, I have to scroll down each tag and see how many articles are associated with that tag, how many pieces of information are associated with that tag. And that is just a limit of Evernote. Evernote also doesn't work well with blogging communities. Our website, the kpopcollective.com, or kpopcollective.com, is housed in WordPress, and Evernote doesn't work well with WordPress. So we had to find a work away or workaround for that. The wins, however, for Evernote is that they have unlimited tags. You can tag as many things as you like. This is great for when we expand that folksonomy that we're using. Evernote is also easy to use. It's a very low learning curve. If you know how to use your mouse to click on a, on a piece of information or click a link, you can use Evernote. Even though Evernote does not recognize hierarchy between tags, we've been using the notebook function to help categorize information and check our work, and that's been very helpful for us to keep our folksonomy clean. So even though we have this folksonomy in order to keep it clean, we can check our work. And even though it doesn't have the hierarchy, we can check our work and make sure the hierarchy is being used within the rules of classification that we've set up. I'll talk about that in a few moments. Evernote also synchronizes across platforms. So whether I log into my desktop client, log onto the website, at Evernote into our account or log onto my iPhone using the Evernote app. Whatever I do in one place will show up in, a, in, a, in the other. You also heard about viewable tagging in your readings. That's one of the, uh, the, uh, the wins for Evernote. It helps us keep that folksonomy clean. So when tags are entered, when people are tagging information, the other tags that are already are close to that will show up for people to help them keep a keep in mind the folksonomy that we're using and to not re-tag items that we've already tagged with that same information, that same metadata. The web browser extension, the web clipper, it makes it very, very easy to clip things on the fly. So if you see something or people see things as they browse the internet, they can add information right away and tag that information, again, using the viewable tagging function in Evernote. And also, the Web Clipper works with any extension. There's a Web, Cl a web Clipper app for any browser that you use. So Google Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, Mozilla. You can, if you use any of those, there's a Web Clipper application for you, or Web Browser application for your extension. Evernote also has an annotation function, which is great. One of the things we try to we have at the K-pop Collective are student workers or student interns, and one of the things we're teaching them is how to evaluate information. So we, it has this annotation function, so we can put in information when we're clipping things. We can say why we clip something, why this is important for our work, why we've decided to add it to the to the archive. So it helps our student workers and everyone else understand how to evaluate information, what types of things we're looking for when we're adding things to the archive. And as I said earlier, 
Evernote works well with other social media networks so it works well with Facebook Twitter um, and that's really great because we have present a presence on those other social networks as well users must be trained to use the Evernote tool employ the rules of classification and become familiar with the folksonomy these working documents especially the tag appendix are updated frequently as more topics surface for our research you'll note that the rules of classification are few for now conversely the folksonomy currently spans about eight and a half pages it may be helpful for you to visualize the Evernote interface and understand how we use it the green area is where the check system goes. It's where those notebooks that I mentioned are housed. Our check system is quite simple. The clip notes go into the notes under review folder. When people are clipping, that's the default folder. And when they've been reviewed, they go into the K-pop collective folder, this KPK folder right here. The blue area is the folksonomy or the list of tags. These tags can be updated or renamed quickly for uniformity or deleted for redundancy or irrelevance if needed. And this happens often as it takes new, new users time to become familiar with this folksonomy and the classification rules. Any changes are automatically reflected in any affected notes. The notes are listed in this purple area with the most recent notes at the top and I work with the notes in this orange area here I can read the article so I can add more tags or determine if there are any incorrect tags that have been assigned once I review the article again I move to the KPK folder so here is a simplified visual of how I created this folksonomy I started with a decision on the broad subject areas again even though we don't recognize the tags versus sub tags I want to create broad areas and then create sub tags within those areas this is just so we as we clip things have a framework for how we're, what language we want to use when we're deciding on why information is important why I want to add it to our archive for our work from there I determined the classification rules and then I created this checking system so again to keep that folksonomy clean and then after that I needed to train users on how to use the web clipper how to add notes how to employ the rules of classification and then how to tag the the documents how to tag the articles that they put into the Evernote or to, to the into the archive by the way if you haven't g yet guessed I call it a modified folksonomy because it was created by one user for use by all users and even though other users may add to the folksonomy it is ultimately modified and maintained by one user that's me um, within true folksonomy almost any inner tags would stand because they are generated by the creators experiences perceptions of using the information and putting the information using the archive using the tool We've decided to use this kind of approach to reflect the scholarly mission of our group and to avoid bias in our information gathering work where we can. I do have concerns for the future. There may be more classification rules. This has been we've been working on this in earnest for about the last three months, so that'll determine that'll be determined by feedback I receive. Um, there may have to be an expanded folksonomy as more information is discovered for the archive. We may have to start talking about things like language. Should we um, Romanized information or keep Hangul if we start find, locating things in Hangul, which is Korean, a uh, Korean script, Korean phonics. Tag cleanup is always going to be a concern. Maintaining the integrity of the folksonomy, adding tags, removing tags. We're also looking at how to involve the K-pop collective readers in this project, and it would be wonderful if we had a visualized tag cloud at some point, but that's up to Evernote and depends on how Evernote chooses to develop this tool as it moves forward. And this leads me to a final question for you, which is, as a folksonomy grows, what are some challenges that may arise for users? That's all I have for you today. I look forward to your questions and ideas. I'm sure your professor will forward them to me. For now, yorabuni, kwashime kansamida. That's Korean for thanks very much for your attention.